who is the creator of children? God, not so. But unless there is an intercourse between a man and a woman, a child will not come forth. Amen. So although God creates children, there is a process of intercourse between a man and a woman that takes God's creation and brings it to manifest physically. Not so. So God may give you a promise that this year you will marry. It will not come to pass unless you do what they require to do for it to happen. Praise the Lord. To every promise, there is a principle to activate its fulfillment. I say it again. To every promise, there is a principle to activate. Tell somebody to every promise. To every promise. If you have your pen and paper, write it down. To every promise, to every promise. There, is a there is a principle to activate its, its fulfillment. So write it down. So if God promises you, if God promises you, it will not come to pass because God has said it. Are you getting me? It comes to pass because you 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 know the principle. Amen. Okay. If I call you, let's say somebody called you from America, until you take your phone and press the button, can you receive the call? So now no matter who is calling you, even if it's the president, you must do some work to press a button before you can hear what the person is saying. Same thing. Amen. So, God tells us things, but they are principles that we must keep in order to see it manifest. Amen. Amen. Now, we want to study some few things to understand why some things are happening the way they are happening. Because they shouldn't happen the way they happen. Amen. Now, I repeat again. Watch this thing. God is the one that creates children. Amen. But unless there is an intercourse between a man and a woman, a child which God has created cannot manifest. So, but the fact that the man is the one that impregnates the woman, does he make him the creator of the child? He just used, he just uh, uh, performed a principle that brought what God has said to come to pass physically. Amen. Now, this is a principle. There's no light. Amen. If I want light to come, do I pray? Let there be light. Will light come? What is principle? So the principle for you to have light is to put on the switch, not to pray. If you, are, you want to urinate, do you pray? What do you do? If you are praying, your bladder may explode. Amen. Bible says that Jesus was hungry. Is it your Bible? He was so hungry that he caused a fig tree. What did a fig tree do to him? He was not even in time to eat fig tree. He went and caused the poor tree. But why? According to the principle of life, when a man is hungry, he does not pray, he eats. Amen. So God has spoken to us that this is the month of honor. Now, we want to see what are the things we should do and how we should act in order that the promise of God may be fulfilled in our life. Can I hear amen to that? Amen. So right here, listen to me. God is not going to bless you because God has blessed you. You don't understand me? It's not the day you get pregnant that God created that child. Is it true or false? The child has been there since. But that's the day you did the principle and the child manifested. God has blessed you. God has promoted you. God has lifted you up. But until you fulfill the principles in life, it is principles that make prosperity. Amen. Obedience to God's principles make you a principal over principalities. Any man that obeys the principles of God becomes a principal over principalities. Why did Adam and Eve leave the, gar the garden of Eden? Because they disobeyed God. God said, don't eat and they ate. But let me ask you a question. God is rather funny. Why? God does not want them to eat, right? True or false? Why did God put the tree in the garden? Was it not easier for God to make a garden without a tree? Is that not easier? So why did God put the garden, put the tree in the garden and said, don't eat from this? God does not want Adam and Eve to eat of this tree. Yet, isn't it easier for God 
to not to put the tree there. I be he does not want somebody to eat from it now. And he's almighty God. Why did God not put it somewhere in the garden where they cannot see? Amen. Now, after Adam and Eve disobeyed, the Bible says, and God told cherubim to guard the tree. Unless Adam come and eat from the tree of life. Not so. Why did God not ask that angel sins to guard that tree? You know what it means? In life, you will always be faced with choices. The greatest problem of humanity is the wrong choice they make. Every man has equal opportunity to be great. But people make wrong decisions. There are people today, they call them, your mother is dead, your father is dead. You are here. I mean, you should thank God for grace. I mean, there are people that accident today. There are people who died today. But we are here now. So it is the same day, yet he brought different things to people. Your life is ruled by your choices. Your everyday, your, 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 your life of today is a product of your choice of yesterday. Are you getting me? You hearing me? So it is what you, you, it is the choice you made yesterday that put you in the position where you are today. I always tell you, and I keep telling you, a mis listen, God forgives sin. God does not forgive mistake. If you need school fees and you sleep with a married man, amen, you pray, God will forgive the sin, but God will not forgive the mistake. You can't say, oh God, I did it because I was hungry. There is no justification when it comes to sin. Amen. Amen. So, it is the choices that I made that have put me here. It is the choices you made that have put you there. He said, I put before you life and death. Choose this day. All entire, listen, the world is full of choices. Let me give an advice. Never ever do anything without thinking. Because any choice you make has a consequence on your future. Even if when you were making it, you were just like that, it has a consequence. Every choice you make, a choice emanates from a thought. From a thought, it becomes a word. From a word, it becomes an action. Amen. Now, for you to be sitting here is a choice. You could, I mean, there are places you could be here now. True or false? So your sitting here is a choice on its own. True or false? Now, there are people who have not come. But all of us have the equal opportunity to come. Now, some of people say they are tired. Are you two not tired? Some of you have gone to work today. Some went to school, but you are still here early. Why have some not come? Choice. Amen. So life is full of what? No man will be able to blame God. It is your choice that puts you where you are. Listen, if you send your child to the wrong school, your child will be initiated. It is your choice. It's not God. You enter the wrong bus, palm, accident. It is your choice. That's why the Spirit of God must guide our choices. Praise the Lord. So, we are here to... to understand what are those choices we should make that will lead to honor in the month of March. That's what I'm preaching about. Amen. I'm talking on principles of honor. What is it about? Again. One more time. No matter how dear you buy a car, a car will not start on its own. You must take the key and put it in the ignition and turn it. Amen. Okay. So, it means in life, there is nothing that can work on its own. No matter how much you are, no matter how intelligent a computer is, if I press a button off, it will go off. True or false? A computer can do mathematical equations that a human brain cannot. A computer can calculate 1,250,000 times 2,568,000 in one second true or false but i can put him off in one second it means with all his might a button can put him off same thing with satan no matter how satan claims to do evil there is a button that puts him off and you shall know that and the truth shall make you free so freedom is not a function of prayer it's a function of wisdom 
it knowledge is a key that opens the door of your prison when a man is in a prison the man does not need a prophet the man needs the truth so if a prophet comes to you and does not give you the truth he gives you solace you know what they call solace temporal comfort respite the word they call it means you are sick they pray for you two weeks no sickness you are now fine oh thank you jesus after the way you come back higher than before amen so what you need now is the truth so when a man of god is coming he, he is supposed by divine mandate to bring the truth in your life but unfortunately we are in times when people don't want the truth they want to be fooled if i say now that god will give you a car tomorrow some people jump and say amen but let me tell you the truth you will not receive the car the problem is never god giving the trouble is you receiving if you go and send money in express before the person whom you send it to take it he must appear there and show his id card even if it's your father that sends you money you can't go and tell express it's my father it is true it's your father show the id card amen so they are principles that god has put in place when a man understands them whenever he shows up in heaven with the prayer request they are answered he told peter i listen he said ask it shall be open it shall be given to you knock shall be open see you shall find but he told peter i give you the keys why some are asking some have the key why you are still knocking god open for me somebody come and enter and the key is knowledge this night i pray that god open your heart to receive knowledge from his word the bible is the recorded format of god's voice is the recorded word and prophecy is when god reveals his thoughts to a man through another man have you understood that prophecy is revealing god's thoughts to a man that's what we call prophecy is what okay we're talking about what principles of principles of say principles of honor and let's open to isaiah chapter 61 and verse 7 we we'll get there i'll try to take, talk about sunday a little bit that we go for today amen the lord will help us right now instead of your shame you shall have double honor and instead of confusion they shall rejoice in their portion therefore in their land they shall possess double everlasting joy shall be theirs amen let's now here the bible says that instead of shame you shall have what double but you know something we are not seeing this in the life of people are you getting what i'm trying to tell you isaiah chapter 61 and verse 7 now the bible says instead of your shame you shall have what but today most christians if you check their life it is full of shame if you come to church you find okadas packed outside you go to a nightclub you see homer jeeps packed outside the highest unbelievers believers believe god for marriage more than unbelievers i'm telling the truth oh i mean if you check how many girls marry in one year it is more unbelievers than believers although the unbelievers come and marry a church they are unbelievers but those who are fervently worshiping and adoring the lord they read they live their life in shame you see christians their life is full of reproach somebody will pray for three days after you drive fast and you sleep they come and give you food what is that after you've prayed and fasted you say oh thank you lord for answering my prayer as you sleep a man come to sleep with you that is disgraceful but the bible says that instead of shame you shall have double honor so if a christian sees shame in his life you must ask a question what is wrong you don't just say uh, my day go break all things go fine one day experience is not the best teacher because he has killed most of his students many people who decided to learn by experience are dead many women who decided to study marriage by experience are now divorced because before they understood that don't talk about what your husband talk many slaps have arranged their face amen i'm sorry don't be angry i'm, I'm preaching the bible by which 
If before she married, she met a person, the person would have told her, see, when a man talks, stay quiet. But when you not marry, Becky, baby, you must show that you two you have some talk. Is this how you met me? I beg not because I've come go down to your level to marry you. Bah! <laughs> one of my friends, <laughs> one of my sons told me that one day he came back home. His wife asked me, where are you from? Where are you from? Gave him, pa! He gave her, pa! Pa! From that day to now, when she seen from afar, she just need them. We are welcome, daddy. <laughs> Even if he comes at midnight, those slaps get... <laughs> I pray you will not learn by beating. <laughs> now you see, experience is not a good teacher. It has taught her, but now she has a swollen jaw. But she has learned the lesson. So many people have died trying to learn through experience. Tell somebody, the best teacher is the word of God. And the next is your mentor. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so we are trying to see principles of honor. Amen. Now, the first principle of honor we see is that God honors those who honor him. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. What is the first principle? Okay. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. Therefore, the Lord God of Israel says, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father will walk before me forever. But now, the Lord says, far be it from me. For those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Now, the first principle of honor is that God honors those who honor him. Honor is not a gift. If honor were a gift, then you don't need to do anything to have it. Because a gift is an unmerited favor or kindness. But honor is not a gift. Now, if honor were a gift, then we can say, oh, God has not chosen to honor me. So we could easily put the blame on God. Are you getting me? But honor is not a gift. Amen. Honor is a fruit. A fruit is what you bear. A gift is what you, you have given to you. Amen. Now, no woman here, there is nothing you did to be born black. True or false? There is nothing you did to be born fair in complexion. Now, if they born someone, someone yellow, someone black. Now, prayer... But now watch this. So to be born black, short, tall, fat is not your doing. Amen. But to maintain shape is not your doing. Some people were born slim that become fat. Some were fat that become slim. Number two, nobody is born with a good or a bad character. Character is not a gift. It is a fruit. Young girls should spend time working on their character because Beauty can attract a man, but it is character that keeps a man. A man may marry you because of the size of your breasts or your buttocks, but it is the size of your heart that will keep him in the house. Don't be angry again. Amen. I beg. I, 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 I preach and preach. So, that's what I'm trying to talk about. No matter how you love your child, you cannot break his head and put GCE success inside. True or false? The child must study. So, same thing with honor. Honor is not a gift. It is a fruit. Now, a fruit is what you bear through patience. If you can... The first principle of fruit is that fruit is with patience. There is nothing you plant today and you eat today it means you are a vampire. Anything which is planted now and eaten now is occultic. Amen. There is a process of time. That's what Jesus said. And they bear fruit with patience. Honor is not a gift. Honor is a fruit. Now, if honor is a fruit, then a seed must have been planted. True or false? You can never talk about having a fruit where you don't have a seed. Is it true? So, when when there is a seed of honor there will be the fruit of honor the first seed of honor 
the first thing which you plant in order to reap the fruit called honor is that you must honor God. Why? Because God honors. Now, in this scripture, listen, when God speaks, it's not an advice, it's an instruction. Are you getting me? God does not advise, God instructs. Write it down. God does not advise, God does what? God instructs. God does not command, God commands. To command means what? I mean, you know English now. To command means to appreciate. God commands. It means what God says is not a commendation. It's a commandment. Amen. Amen. Now, the first seed you must plant to reap the fruit called honor, whether in your life, in your marriage, or in anything, is honor God. Now, God was speaking to, the, in the Bible here, Lambro Shatter. God was speaking to a man called Samuel, how many of you know Samuel? You saw your hands, you know Samuel? Now, Samuel was the son of who? Hannah, amen. Samuel was whose son? I believe you all know that. Now, before, when Hannah was barren, it is Eli, the priest, that told her that she would have a child. True or false? Now, she now had the child. Now, Eli was from the tribe of Levi. And Levi is the one to whom God said, from this tribe, all of you will be priests. Royalty is not by election, it's by birth. Amen. Same thing with priesthood. To be a priest of God is you don't choose, you must be elected. That was how it was in the Old Testament. Amen. And even so it is now. You don't choose to become a prophet. You are called as a prophet. What we do is predestination. Nobody says, oh God, use me as a prophet. If you are not born a prophet, you are not a prophet. Amen. Amen. Now, watch this now. And now, God gave a promise to Eli. You and your family shall walk before me what forever. It means Eli, his children, great grandchildren, great 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 grandchildren, and so forth. Amen. But Eli and his children dishonor God, and God said, "I God, I am the one that promised you that your entire generation will walk before me and will be my priests and servants." But now I reject you. It means the great 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 grandchildren of Eli suffered because of the error of their great great grandfather. Some of you have been displaced from your position of honor because your grandfather worshiped a stone or worship a snake. I mean, there are many of you here. If you look, look at your hand, they, are, they have cut your hands everywhere. Some of you have a big mark on your jaw. You think that was that for? Is it a Christianic mark? This is your mark of crucifixion. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, get this thing straight. Amen. Let us understand this thing now. Are you with me now? Follow me clearly. God gives a promise. He said, Kevin, you, your children, up to your 10th generation, all of you shall be rich. Then me, I dishonor God. And God says, Kevin, not only you, I have denied even all your children. Are you seeing what I'm trying to bring out? So, therefore, there becomes a problem because one man dishonored God. So many of us are... Let me ask you a question. The other day I saw a child who was one month old. He had HIV AIDS. What did that begin to do? But what, what displays him? Wait, is it God's will for him to be born with HIV? When the parents made a mistake, it dishonored the parents and sorry, it displaced the parents and also displaced him. So, although God had planned that you'll be born good, he was now born sick, which is not God's will. Amen. Many of us, God planned that marriage for your family, but because of the error of your grandparents, you are now born into marital disappointment. Not because God planned so, but because somebody made an error, that error shall be corrected by you. I thought I was prophesying. <laughs> Little shatter harder. Are you getting me? So, watch this. God says, you, your entire family, you shall be very, very successful in education. That's your blessing. And one person comes and dishonors God. And when that person dishonors God, God says, okay, you have been displaced. Watch this. Every time God lifts up a man, God brings down another. Yes, Never forget this thing. The answer of your prayer is to the detriment of somebody else. No answer. You pray that rain should fall. Somebody pray that rain should not fall. Somebody has crusade, does not want rain. You, you are feeling heat, you want rain. 
A man has a garage. He's praying for customers. Motor gear for jam. But the people are in church. My car will not have an accident. How will God do? All of their church members. My, my son, doctor, has a clinic. He has clinic to go forward. So people have to be sick. But I'm praying, you shall not be sick. How will God will do her now? So every time God answers your prayer, somebody else is crying. <laughs> Holy Spirit, help us. <laughs> I say, Holy Spirit, help us. But are you flow with me? Yeah. Okay, watch this now. <laughs> the mistake of your great grandparents is so powerful that it has displaced most of you in your, your line of calling. God does not give you a promise. No. God gave a promise to your forefathers. God has no business with you. God does not bless a man. God blesses a generation. Write that down. God does not bless a man. God blesses a generation. The blessings of Abraham are mine. And same thing, Satan does not curse a man. Satan curses a generation. So the mistake of a man will be the downfall of a generation. The wrong choice of a man will cause the downfall of his generation. And the right choice of a man will cause the uprising of his generation. Those of you that are fine in life is because your parents made a good choice. Not because you did anything. Some of you are here, you can testify. When you are going to school, you trek from Balangi to Kumba. True or false? Bare feet, no matanga. But now you give your child 500 to school, he says it's not enough. Why? Because you have work now. Money is there. But your father's time is not even up. Pa! Begin to go. <laughs> eh? Come back, come back. Carry the cocoa. When you come out school, go live for a kumbe. Then you come out for balangi. <laughs> you don't carry cocoa yam. In class, you put cocoa near your leg. You take less. <laughs> In long break, they used to leave school and rush home to soak Gary. But now, just go to school during long break. They are fried egg, hamburger. Fanta, who give you even matango for your time? <laughs> even Pam, who give you Pammy in school? I mean, when you go to school now, it's like it's a night, it's a leisure ground. Schools have a they call it canteen. Who gave us canteen? You now go to a canteen, you enter there, hamburger, fried egg, dodo, eru, ekwan, ndole in school. And some of those canteens behind the Fanta, there is enough ice. Yeah, in school. Just say, sure. School life is not relaxed. Before, if you want to see somebody, you must travel. Now you just pick your phone. One, two, one, two, three. How fine? How fine? It's not done. So the things your parents, but after time, eh, when you when people were in love, it was true love because only later. <laughs> You send letter on Monday, he arrived the person on Monday in January, the person in March. <laughs> the person right but do you know those how many people are here in those holidays where your relatives were abroad? Before letter reached them to you, if you send letter in January, it is six months through ship, it reached for June. You answer it reached for December. So if you had a problem where you needed money before the money comes, you are dead. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But look at you now. Is enjoyment. So what they suffer, you are not suffering. And some of you, what they did not suffer, you are suffering. Now, you must understand this thing. Your actions don't only impact your life. It impacts your generation. Every action you take does not only affect you, it affects your generation. Everybody, a person will go, um, I want to do this. I want power. They give her. She takes power. She becomes a very beautiful queen in the village. Then soon, all her daughters are born beautiful, but none can marry. Is it God's will? No. She dishonored God and she was displaced from the line of God. God set a line for every family. God set a line for Adam and Eve, but sin took them out of the line. The Lord shall replace somebody back in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I said, may the Lord bring us back in the line in Jesus' name. Yeah.